So the other day I posted a uh, picture of these uh, speaker covers that I made, and surprisingly, uh, people seem to like them. Um, so I, so I figured, you know, it's really easy to adapt what I did here to any sort of logo or, you know, black and white image. So I wanted to go ahead and just make a video for anybody else who wants to go ahead and make their own. Um, for the video today, we're going to use um, the Black Panther logo to make a set of Black Panther speaker covers. So the real key to, um, you know, doing this easily is to have a solid black and white image to work with. So if you pull a logo off the internet, you want to make sure that you use some sort of image editing software um, so that you can get it that there are only two colors or shades or whatever you want to call them, um, or the absence of color. <laughs> But you want it to be black and white. You don't want any grays. Um, you don't want any transparencies. You don't want any colors. You want a strict black and white photo. And so that's what I have here is a black and white photo of the uh, Black Panther logo. All right, so we're going to start out here in a uh, program called Blender. And I have it slowed down here just so I can explain. This is not a course on Blender. Um, so it's, you know, it. Hopefully you have some knowledge. If not, just download Blender, give it a shot. Um, really, it's you know it doesn't take much to learn it. You could probably get the basics down in a you know a couple hours. Not probably not even a couple hours. But anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to import a file here that I had created. Um, this is an STL file, um, which is you know one of the many 3D object files. And this is an STL that I prepared. I'm going to throw it up on Thingiverse. Um, so that everybody can download or somehow make it available for anyone to get. And it's basically just a template for what we're going to create, which is our At Games Legends Pinball Speaker. Um, and so once this loads, you'll see that it is basically just a circle and a mesh. And so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a new 3D object it's going to be a cube. All right. And we're going to resize this cube to make it pretty big. So we're going to press um, S to scale it. And we're going to first scale the X. And we'll just say, you know, 8. And then we're going to press S again, then press the Y, then do 8 again. So S, X, 8, S, I'm sorry, yeah, Y, 8. So S, X, 8, S, Y, 8. And this is what we're going to use to create. Now, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going here and I'm creating a texture. And we're going to use a texture to um, load up an image. So here, you can't see it, but I'm actually loading um, an image here. And there you can see it's uh, the Black Panther logo. And it's very important whenever you prepare your image, you want it to be black and white. You don't want any sort of in-betweens there. You just want a crisp black and white image. And what we're going to use, do is use that template. So we uh, went back here and we select the cube. And I went to um, this toolbox over here and I'm adding a modifier. Uh, what a modifier does is allow you to make changes to any sort of 3D object. And this one is displace, which basically takes an object and kind of displaces certain, certain things. And so the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, you'll see here if I subdivide, which is just taking this mesh and uh, kind of slicing it down. So you'll see there, when I go back here, you can kind of see what Displace is doing. It's going to uh, displace that image. And the further we refine this down, so the more slices we make, and this is going to be pretty intensive uh, on the computer here, but there you can see we really got it down. Um, and so when I go back here to the object view, so we've been using two views, object view and edit view. I'm trying to narrate this after the fact, but you'll see there, you know, looks very, very crisp. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to apply that modifier so that it sticks and now becomes an actual part of the object. So there's no cube left. Now the only thing that exists is that. I'm going to go back into edit paint or edit mode here. Because what we want to do is 
we don't want this whole thing. All we want is the bottom layer. So you kind of got to be really careful. And by the way, if your image wasn't completely black and white, you probably won't have a bottom layer, but you'll have a mixture. And you don't want that. So you definitely want it to be black and white, no shades. All right. So if you so once we selected that, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that. So we're going to go to Mesh and Duplicate. And then we're going to press the Escape key so that it doesn't move around. Then we're going to go to Mesh and take that, what we just duplicated, and separate it out. And we're going to make it its own mesh. So you see when I did that over here, you'll see we now have two objects. And if I go back to object mode, I can hide one of these objects, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to hide... Uh, And now all you will see is what we had sliced off. Looking pretty good, right? All right. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add a modifier here just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. It already looks great, um, but we're just going to add a few, yeah, just a little bit here. Honestly, it looked good to begin with, but, you know, this, I guess, helps a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and apply that. All right, so now we have our basic shape. What we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode, and we're going to use um, our axes here just to kind of get a good view because we want it to be straight on. And what we want to do is we want to take that mesh that we created, and we want to extrude it. So we're going to use this extrude option over here. And then we're going to pull down, and as we pull down, you'll see that I am you know, kind of thickening what was a flat layer. All right. So now if I go to object mode, you'll see we now have something that is a 3D object. So now all we're going to do is we're going to kind of scale this down to fit our speaker cover. Kind of, again, use our, you want to always have like the right view and you can use um, up in the upper right hand corner there. Those axes kind of let you, you know, make sure you're in alignment so that you're either looking straight at the Z axis, the X axis, the Y axis. And we're kind of moving it around here. Trying to get it centered. Looking good. Alright, and then we just need to, we're going to go back to our wireframe. So you'll notice up there, I have two views that I'm kind of going between. I'm going between a wireframe and a solid view. That's up. Alright, All right. just kind of make it a little bit skinnier there. Let's kind of push it down. And then what you really want to do is, that looks pretty good. But we need to make sure, there I just went back to the solid view. But what we want to make sure is that we are aligned with that top. Because when we go to print, we want them to be basically one flat surface, both the ring around it and the object that we're using as kind of our picture for the mesh. All right, so looking pretty good. So just make sure you get really in here. Uh, that didn't help. I need to. All right, so you'll notice that um, I could no longer, when I got in this far, I was not able to do, uh, not able to see the, uh, oh, whatever those things are that allow me to, to move it. Um, so I, what I went in was I went to and made, uh, set the origin to the geometry just so, it was now center with the new object that we created, not the original cube, which is what it was going off of before. Uh, 
All right, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to kind of, this is in no way anything you need to do. Um, just to have fun, though, we're going to kind of look at uh, what it would look like once we print. So there I'm going to the third one across, which is actually allows me to see uh, different uh, colors and materials applied. And so this, again, has nothing to do with printing. Um, you could stop the video five seconds ago and move on to the printing piece and you're fine. But I figured it'd be fun just to see kind of what they would look like. Uh, right now I'm separating out the, um, the honeycomb mesh because it was part of the original object, but it needs to be its own separate uh, piece there. And you'll actually want to do that uh, before you print because you'll need to take it. You're basically going to have two different prints. You're going to have one print be the honeycomb, one print be the rest of, of this. All right, so that's kind of what it's going to look like. And what we're going to do is we're going to export this as an STL file. And you can't see it right now, but I'm actually exporting it as a STL file. So when we went to, to make the STL file, I, can't, I couldn't show the window there, but it, I only wanted to have the three uh, or the, um, the ring selected and the face here. Wait, I didn't want the honeycomb selected. And when I did that, there was an option that says selected objects only. I chose selected objects only. And so all that got exported to the STL file, which is what we're going to use to print, um, was just the Black Panther face and the ring that goes around. And then what we would do, actually, I think I made that mistake and didn't do it. And here's me actually now doing it with just those two instead of including the honeycomb. And then we would make create a separate STL file for just the honeycomb. Yeah, that must be it. All right, so that's what we're doing here. And the next step is going to be to go ahead and get it ready to print. All right, so the software I use for 3D printing is uh, Cura. I'm using 4.9 right now. And uh, again, if you're not familiar with 3D printing, this isn't exactly a... Uh, a tutorial on 3D printing, but um, yeah, yeah. So the first thing I had to do was I imported the object that we created, and I had to set the scale to 2300 just because my model was small. When I post the uh, thing to Thingiverse, it's not going to be small. And then second, I had to rotate it because we want that image to be the flat surface on the bottom. And then you can go in and tweak your settings here. And then just export the file and send it to the printer. Here it's going. All right, let's see how it uh, turns out. So here it is. It's pretty solid here. Turn it over, you see the back. And uh, here we can see it with um, two different grills. I kind of dig gold and black. Um, not sure which one looks the best, but here's the black. And uh, here it comes. Here's the gold. So, uh, yeah, you decide. But anyway, that's how you make these things. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And here's some cheesy outro music.